beautiful sanctuary is highlighted by some beautiful work by our ladies. When you think about the Christmas season, Yeah. 
place with a prayer. Will you bow with me? Lord God, we come to you now in the most humble way that we know how. On our knees, in our prayer closets, wherever we are, Lord, we come to you with seeking your grace and your mercy. We realize, Lord, that you are omnipotent forever and ever. You hold our hearts in your hands. We ask now, Lord, that as we begin this worship service, you strengthen us individually and collectively. You guide us toward the path of righteousness. You strengthen us at the places in which we are weak. You give us the glory that is yours demonstration of a life that you would have us live. Lord, we ask you to bless us now as we continue to uplift and praise your name. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. Making a joyful noise.
get your Bibles out here in the pew and turn to Luke, second chapter, verses 25 through 35. Luke, second chapter, verses 25 through 35. find that, be aware of the fact that Reverend Reese is going to come from this passage for his sermon this morning. So if you can follow along, please turn to that. We'll go from there. <coughs> the Christmas season is here, and I have it on good authority that the pastor and the first lady are getting ready to get out of town. Now we get out of town, they're talking about getting out of the country. <laughs> so if you hear about any incidents going on in Germany over the next couple of weeks, uh, check your uh, paper closely to make sure it's not them. <laughs> because they've asked for bail money, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but they're going to be visiting daughter number one. And uh, bring them greetings from our congregation here, so please do that, Mom. Amen. I, I asked her this morning, are you ready to go? Yes. She <laughs> <laughs> made me finish the sentence. She was ready to go. Okay. Uh, the pastor will visit trying to count the money, but I don't know if he's going to be able to explain all the things that she wants to do. <laughs> uh, going to some place called Chris Kindle Mark. There's a place in Germany, all over Germany, really called Chris Kindle Mark. Chris Kilmore is where you go to buy Christmas presents for everybody. So before you leave today, make sure they have your name, <laughs> phone number, everything. We know we're looking forward to their taking some time to spend with daughter. Amen. So we're looking forward to a safe trip to them, a safe travel. Amen. 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 Um, one of those things we're doing tomorrow is we're going to go out and look at the parsonage and uh, talk with the realtor about it. So that's the next step in our process of moving forward ahead with the response and things that we have decided we want to do. Uh, hopefully we'll have it on on the multi list in the next few days. And so number three echoes will be on a list of things to sell for Mr. Paulson. Uh, as we move forward into 2024. Uh, let's see. Someone asked me, uh, Godfrey asked me, he says, where are we supposed to get all this food that you promised to give to me? <laughs> uh, today, you know, you'll be guy to figure it out. <laughs> you know, if there are those of you here and then the audience listening and on Facebook or whatever, that need food for the upcoming holiday, by all means, get in touch with our United Methodist men, and uh, we are committed to making sure that we're able to provide you some assistance that you need. That does not include seven or $800 toys for the kids. <laughs> You're on your own on that one. Okay, um, before we go forward with our next portion of the Worship service. I'd like to ask that the choir or the, the, uh, the praise team come and give us really uh, the opening to the minister's uh, sermon this morning. So if you will come now, we will talk about some other things a little later as you come. <laughs>
this being the first Sunday of Advent, the theme today would be about hope. So I ran across one of my favorite characters in the Bible. His name is brought up very briefly, but his gift to us as people of today is very valuable. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take it, take a look into him this morning. Amen. Amen. If you would turn with me into the book of Luke. The book of Luke. Chapter 2. Verses 25 through 35. Book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 25 through 35. And if you don't mind, if you would please stand out of reverence to reading of God's word, if you are able. If you are able. <coughs> and I will be reading out the English Standard Version this morning. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout and waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Verse 26, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law. He took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. Verse 30, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people. Israel. If this message were to be given a title, we would just simply call it Our Expectant Hope. Our Expectant Hope. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for meeting us here. Prepare this place for us to receive your word. We thank you in advance for what you're doing right now and what you're about to do. Lord, we ask right now that whoever came here with something has given them the issue, that they leave here changed, that they leave all their burdens here at the altar. Lord, decrease me as you increase in and through me that I may be your vessel. Lord, let the hearers not only hear, but let them also apply this word. Your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated. Many of us have communicated with our friends and loved ones things that we have on our bucket list. Some folks hope to travel around the world before they die, while others speak of accomplishing educational feats such as going back to get their diplomas, masters, or doctoral degrees because of life circumstances that kept them from doing so when they were much younger. While others want to add skydiving or climbing one of the world's tallest mountains as something to try as part of their bucket list. Amen? As for me, among several items I have on the bucket list for myself, personally, and to do with my wife, of course. I would love to visit every football stadium in the NFL. Y'all surprised? <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> and to take her, can't leave her out, and to take my beautiful wife to all the most beautiful places on the planet Earth before I move on from this earthly life. Amen? Amen. Well, our main character for the morning had one simple wish on his bucket list. This man's name was Simeon. Luke 2, 25 and 35 tells of Simeon, a righteous and devout man 
who was waiting for the coming of Christ. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and the Spirit had revealed to him that he would see the Jesus Christ before he died. Just these few short verses about this man have challenged me in so many ways. The waiting room of life. We've all been there, amen? We know a breakthrough is coming, but when? We can easily grow tired and weary if we are not proactively keeping our eyes on the prize. This lesson from the book of Luke and our brother Simeon offers us some insight this morning. Promises will soon come to pass. Amen? Amen. Simeon knew God's promises. You find that in verse 29. I wonder if I lived during Simeon's time, would I be one who was eagerly looking for the Christ? Or would I have been among those who blindly read the scriptures, speaking of the very one they dismissed? No doubt Simeon's knowledge was not only in his head, it was also in his heart. Simeon received the promise of God. It is one thing to read or hear about God's promises, but it is an entirely different and even powerful thing to plant those promises in our hearts. When God says something, we can stop and take a moment to acknowledge that we have seen we have heard or felt the prompting of and then own it. This isn't window shopping, folks. We are taking those promises home. Amen? Amen. Simeon believed the promise of God. We know the promises in our heart. And we make known, then we are better positioned to truly believe those promises. Believing comes by hearing the word of God Amen. over and over again. Amen. Rehearse the promise to nurture genuine belief. Amen? Amen? Simeon anticipated the promise of God. Simeon kept his belief alive by actively looking for the promise of God. Yeah. Maybe he went into each day thinking that this could be the day when everything changes. How refreshing it would be to approach our days thinking that somewhere between the sunrise and the sunset, we were going to see God's purpose and plan actually revealed. To anticipate that this is the day we will see healing in our bodies, freedom, <laughs> or salvation in our families. Because today, very well, may be the day. Simeon had an expected hope that he would meet the Christ before he died. Simeon trusted in the promises of God made to his ancestors. Simeon had a kind of hope that we should know for ourselves. You see, biblical hope is a confident trust that God will keep every single one of his promises. Today, we will consider three attributes of hope by placing a spotlight on this leading character, Simeon, in Luke 2. Amen? Amen. We will go over the act of hoping. Anybody have a pen this morning? The act. Oh, I'll see you back there, young lady. The act of hoping. You take those notes, girl. <laughs> the reason for hope and the object of hope. So who is this man, Simeon? He was old and close to death because Simeon says, I can now depart in peace because your servant has seen your salvation. Can y'all imagine that? Luke does not tell us about his position or even his occupation. Simeon viewed himself as a slave of God. Like a slave, Simeon thinks of himself as totally responsible to and dependent on God. My goodness, that is the act of hoping. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, that is the act of hoping. The scripture says he is waiting. He is waiting. In the Hebrew language, the word hope means to wait. The word hope means to wait. The root in Hebrew 
your weight is stretched string. If there are any guitar players here, yeah, I'm putting the ad out there. There is tension on the string of a guitar waiting for someone to come along and create music. The potential for music bound up in the guitar waiting to be played, my God. The connotation of waiting in our culture is actually boring, amen? I'm waiting for the movie to start at the theater. <laughs> I'm waiting to finish school. I'm waiting for, for my vente brown sugar oat milk cold brew with two shots at Starbucks. <laughs> but think about the picture of a groom waiting for his beautiful bride. I've been to many weddings and I cannot remember a single wedding where the groom was up front checking his watch, signing, rolling his eyes. All the brothers, <laughs> including myself, were all waiting with anticipation. Maybe nervous and jittery, but we were smiling. One of those smiles where your face hurts. Yeah, baby girl, my face was hurting. <laughs> when you're smiling too much. Simeon waits. He prays. He watches. Looking forward to God's promise while living a devoted and righteous life. Yeah, I said it right there. While living a devoted and righteous life. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, I'm glad you asked. We must live a righteous life. Simeon treated people right. He led a devoted life. Devout means he is careful to fulfill his religious duties. Peter instructs the church to live in the same way as we wait for the second advent. 2 Peter 3.11, it says, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people are you to be? You ought to live holy. Wow, let's say that again. You ought to live holy and godly. Godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed is coming. Living, devoting, and treating people right yes. can be boring. Yeah, it can be boring. Or requires way too much effort. <laughs> really? What a damn trick by the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we need to recalibrate our way of thinking. The more we spend on social media, and hanging around people that have no interest in living right. The more we stray away from God and become more like the world. There's an old saying, you are what you eat. Or birds of a feather flock together. What you put in your system or what you expose yourself to, you eventually become. I hope somebody that needs to hear this word is listening this morning. Living devoted to a God is powerful, who is endless joy, who has perfect knowledge, is what we all should be devoted to. Simply because of what our hope is in. That is for the return of Christ. To see him face to face. Let the church say amen. There again is the act of hope. And then there is a reason for Simeon's hope. That's the second. The reason for Simeon's hope. What was the reason for Simeon's hope? Well, God made a personal promise to Simeon. The promise was, Simeon, you will not die before you see the Messiah. God's specific promise to Simeon fits within his larger promise to the nation of Israel. Simeon is waiting for the consultation of Israel. The consultation of Israel is another term for waiting for the Messiah. Messiah is a word that means anointed one. A king is anointed or designated as the chosen one to lead a nation. David was anointed as king and ruled as Israel's most prosperous king. God made a promise to David. The promise was that there would be a king who would come from the line of David 
and would sit on David's throne forever. That God, that the king is the anointed one, the Messiah. But guess what? King David died. <laughs> the kingdom of Israel is divided, and eventually the people go into exile. After the exile, some returned to Jerusalem and began rebuilding the city in preparation for the coming king, the Messiah. The people wait 400 years between what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament. I'm giving y'all Bible study this morning. Amen. Slowly, the prophetic hope for Messiah turns into a pessimistic hope. Right. Maybe God has not kept his promise. In the fullness of time, Jesus comes and he claims to be the Messiah. Uh -huh. Jesus is talking with a woman in John 4. She knows of the messianic hope and she says, I know that Messiah. He's called Christ. Christ is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Yeah. Then you find that Jesus declared, I, the one, speaking to you, I am he. <laughs> the Messiah has been promised, but the people in Simeon have been waiting a very, very long time. Why would Simeon think that God would actually keep his promise after so long? Simeon is devoted and careful to keep his religious duties. His religious duties help him to remember the faithfulness of God. Church, we must remember God's faithfulness as we wait and know our history. Simeon knows the story of the Old Testament as he waits. God promised deliverance from Egypt, and he came. God promised to provide in the desert, and they had manna and water. God promised a land to live in the walls of Jericho as it failed. Simeon has reason to hope because he remembers that God is faithful and God keeps his promise. Can I get an amen? amen? Do I have a witness that God has already been faithful in your life yes. and has been faithful to his promises? Yes. Let the church say amen. amen. My brothers and sisters, we have a reason to hope. Amen. We have reason to hope because God has kept his promise to Israel yes. and he is faithful and still to this day, yeah. keeps yeah. his promises. Amen? Amen. You find in 2 Peter 3, 8 and 10, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. My goodness. And a thousand years are like a day. <laughs> the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand as slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come into repentance. Then you find in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief at night. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. They don't preach these kind of sermons anymore. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid there. Listen to some of these promises. I pray they are encouragement to you, my brothers and sisters. Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will send the Holy Spirit. He will be a comforter and God. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against me. Do not let your heart be troubled. If I go, I will come again. You see, Simeon had reason to hope. I feel a shout coming right here. We all have reasons to hope, my God. We have gone over the act of hope. Simeon's reason for hope. But I say the best for last. So what was the object of Simeon's hope? What was the object of Simeon's hope? But I'm glad you asked that question. The object of Simeon's hope was Jesus. Yeah, amen, amen. Verse 28 in our text this morning, he says, he took the baby Jesus 
in his arms. Simeon picked up an actual person. The hope for salvation is Jesus. The celebration of Jesus' first arrival is not a fairy tale or coming from a Netflix science fiction series. Christmas is a remembrance that God became man. Jesus took on flesh. He entered into space and time and experienced human existence. Became a hundred percent God and a hundred percent man. Joy, pain, laughter, food, sleep, prayer, walking, playing, all of it. When Simeon picks up this baby child Jesus, he does not say this baby is a sentimental reminder of God's love and our hope for a better world. He says in verse 30, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles <laughs> and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon is alluding to several passages from Isaiah when he praises Jesus. You find in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah 49 and 6, when the prophet says, I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Although Jesus is the Messiah promised to come to the nation of Israel, he is the hope for all of the nations. Jesus is the light in the midst of darkness. Darkness in the absence of light. The wisdom in the middle of the wind. The bright and morning star. The rose of Sharon. We know intuitively that the world is not as it should be. Something is broken. We all know as we look at the dysfunction in our government, and it is dysfunctional. Drastic increase in domestic violence and drug overdose, not in the streets, but in our homes. Endless wars, people struggling with identity crisis, had to be nice right there, racism, and a distorted gospel and other cults being practiced all around us. This is not the world that we were meant to live in. Amen? Amen. Someone may innocently ask, so God, what is the plan? God, do something. <laughs> I am here to tell somebody this morning that he has actually done something. He has kept his promise. He has given his son. Simeon had been eagerly waiting for Jesus to come for the first time. The one thing on his bucket list was to see Jesus. Church, Jesus Christ is coming back a second time as well. And we should be eagerly waiting for that day. The Bible says Christ was offered once for all time as a sacrifice to take away the sins of many people. He will indeed come again, not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. Are you eagerly waiting for the return of Christ? Well, let me put it this way. It is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior on your immediate bucket list. If not, then I strongly recommend that it should be. For those who have been in church all your lives, is there an expected hope to see Jesus this morning and for his pending return? I think that is a real test in many ways of where you are spiritually. Remember, religion versus relationship. There is a distinct difference. If you are right with God, then you will long for the return of Christ. If you are not right with God, you are living in a way that shouldn't, you shouldn't be living. Then I think you will dread hearing about the return of Christ. But guess what? He is 
coming back. The first time Jesus came to a manger, the next time he would come in glory. The first time he was surrounded by shepherds and animals, the next time he would be accompanied by saints and angels. The first time there was no room for him at the Motel 6, the next time the doors of heaven will be open to him. The first time he came as the Lamb of God who would die for the sins of the world. The next time he returned as the roaring lion of the tribe of Judah. Yes, Jesus is coming back, y'all. And like Simeon, we should live in anticipation of that day. The Messiah is coming again. David Crowder penned it this way. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Yes, all my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. Is there anybody in here who's thankful that you have been washed by the blood? <laughs> Come on, Andy James. Saved by the power. Born again by the Spirit. Blood flowed from his feet and his hands. Now I'm a brand new man. The blood that I told for me would apply to the mercy seat. <laughs> Jesus, my high priest, used his blood for my liberty, my God. Sin had the privilege of holding hope in his arms when he held that new born baby. That hope <laughs> had a name. And his name was Jesus. I've heard somebody say there's something about that name. Jesus. Send me a hand on to that hope. <laughs> and we have that same expected hope today. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. There's something about that name Jesus. Hope has a name. And that name is Jesus. Let the church say amen. Amen. And amen. This is a time where, I, where we give it invitation of discipleship, but that sermon right there was an invitation to discipleship. Whatever is on your bucket list, you need to have a, what I call a, a right now bucket list of accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yeah. When he went up on that cross, as they smack on him,
in your image to love and to be loved. When we turn the way and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. By the suffering, death, and resurrection of your only Son, Jesus Christ, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body of the blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes, in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever.
submit to you that Charles Reed brought us a glimpse of God's power this morning. We are truly blessed. We were talking about in Sunday school this morning about what a blessing the Reese's have been to the Metropolitan.
So that you may 